you are longer term optimistic. Why? Well, I think what we have now is, you know, when we look at the market, three areas of analysis. One is fundamentals, one's valuation, and the other is technicals. And I think on the fundamental front, you actually, after the Powell presser, we've actually gotten some good news from uh, the, on the employment front, uh, on the inflation front, on the manufacturing activity front. And so I think that uh, we're getting better than feared or less worse data than folks expected. So fundamentals are still solid. Valuations come in and we move back towards that bottom that we we hope, you know, and, and still hope will hold uh, back in June. And from a technical standpoint, we're starting to look a little oversold again. So you mix that all together. And I think you have a fairly good cocktail longer term knowing that folks are still going to fret about all these transitions that are going on with regard to Fed policy and inflation. Um, I think it's a wonderful time for active management, though, because yeah. many stocks are down 40, 50 percent. So it's a stock picker's market uh, at this point in time. Largely been flushed. And, you know, you, you think about a company like a Starbucks, and I bring that up because you like the name. Also, Andrew Ross Sorkin will be live tomorrow morning on Squawk Box out in Seattle with Howard Schultz and the new incoming CEO. I know people that will sacrifice a lot of stuff, Jeff, but if they are addicted to, and I mean addicted to Starbucks, they go, whether it's four or five bucks for that small or whatever they call it. Yeah, and you see that in comp store sales growth in the United States. you got double-digit comp store sales at, at Starbucks. So I think if you want to bet on anything in America, vanity, uh, caffeine, those are two areas and themes that you could probably play that are simple. And quite frankly, Brian, it, it's for me, uh, as we went through COVID, all of a sudden we were looking at cocooning stocks and stocks that had great business models, but but no earnings. And it was all built a, a around, you know, remote access and that type of thing. It's kind of a wonderful time to look back at high quality, what might be considered boring growth stocks again. It's cool to do that again. And I think uh, Starbucks at 24 times earnings. Uh, which is, is kind of hard to find at those low 20 levels in terms of, uh, you know, PEs. It's, it's a great time to uh, own a high-quality dividend growth stock uh, yeah. when China uh, can, can really be a, a boon for them, as well as people going back to work and addicted to caffeine, like you say. Well, <laughs> hopefully we'll be addicted to some infrastructure improvements. There have been some money set aside, obviously, the Inflation Reduction Act, other government spending bills. We've talked about this for a couple of years. Finally waiting to pass a name like a Vulcan Materials or United Rentals. Is there going to be an infrastructure boom here, Jeff? Finally. Well, I think there, there can be an infrastructure pickup, if you will, uh, and that is a catalyst. But also just recovery from this kind of concern about recession. Uh, we're seeing that w whether it's multifamily housing, not necessarily residential, or just general industrial and construction, as we re-onshore and do those things, this is a play on domestic capital investment. And yeah, uh, if you look at uh, United Rental as the most broad, diversified provider of rental equipment, it's, it's just a place where you want to be. And Vulcan benefits as an aggregate provider from those same trends. So yes to your answer. I guess your short answer is yes. <laughs> Well, the crews will be fixing the roads, sipping the Starbucks as well, because hopefully they got a raise. They deserve it. Jeff Crumpleman, Mariner Wealth. We appreciate it, Jeff.